The Roger the Wild Child Show is brought to you by our friends at Prism Design Company. Are you looking for a cool new logo for your business? Do you need some graphics for your new website or blog? Our friends at Prism Design are a premier graphics design company that can handle all your needs. You can find Prism Design Company on Facebook or contact them directly at 618-534-4291. All the great graphics on the Roger the Wild Child Show are brought to you by our friends at Prism Design Company. And now, the hottest new celebrity interview show in the universe. It's the Roger the Wild Child Show. Let's get this party started! Ready, set, go! On the air everywhere. It's the Roger the Wild Child Show! It's time for another exciting edition of the Roger the Wild Child Show with your host, Roger the Wild Child, along with musician, producer, and real estate investor, Darren Sheff, and former Playboy Playmate cover girl and centerfold, Deborah Driggs. Are you ready? Let's do this. Do this. Starts right now. It's the Roger the Wild Child Show. Hey, hey, it's Wednesday night, everyone. How's everybody doing today? It is Roger the Wild Child back at my home studio here in Boise, Idaho. To the left of me, of course, is none other than the great Darren Chef. <laughs> What's going on? Who is there? that guy? Who is, Who is that guy? He? Who is he? I've been busy. Oh my gosh. And like, it's like, nope, Darren's not doing the show this way today. Nope, nope, not this, not I've this been episode. Busy. That oh, was my, my favorite God. line from 48 Hours, man. When that, yeah, that's an old movie, but I love it, man. <laughs> Ask that guy, you know, where, you, where have you been? Man? I've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also have Deborah Drake. Wait, wait a second. You're hey. not Deborah. Mm-hmm. Uh, hang on, I gotta check my nope. notes here. What, what? Oh, I'm sorry. Producer Bo, Bo just informed me we have a guest co-host because Deborah is on her way. What to... a freaking douchebag! That was a yeah. Classic. She's going to Mexico. You know what? Insert random female, and you're ready to roll. So hi, hi, Imogen. <laughs> she is a fitness model and social media influencer. That's right, man, and a cool chick, man. We hit it off in the green room, man. Everybody was on point. <laughs> That was awesome. So how you doing, Imogen? Oh, pretty awesome. I'm still tripping out on Darren's hair. It's that George Lucas look. I just can't get over it. Love it. You know, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. This is uh this is a bad hair day, too. You should see it when I'm really got my shit together here, man. It is. But anyway, I'll take it. Yeah. You should I'll you should see it. how he when he rolls out of bed what he looks. He sends me selfies or whatever all the time, and I'm like, oh yeah, I kind of just that. sit there and pose and look and go, hmm. No. When you say selfies, do you mean pants optional selfies? Is this what we're talking about? Or is this like, you know, yeah, actual? I, I don't really care either way. You know, I mean, you know, when you're my <laughs> size, the soccer moms fucking line up for you, man. I'm telling you, I just go outside. I just pull my shit off. They just, all they can look at is my hair and they go, that's fucking incredible. They don't give a shit about anything else. As long as you can, got hair and can make chicks laugh, they're cool. I'm you. <laughs> that's the key. Don Schwartz, that's my brother. <laughs> Teresa Saban, welcome to the chat room. Yeah. Monica is Monica. here. How are you doing, San Monica? Diego. San Diego. Jason Obama. Banger, Cookie. Oh, hey. Oh, <laughs> hey, Jason. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, she's got fans in the room. Yes, she does. So, Imogen, tell us a little bit about yourself. Let us Let our audience know. What kind of a social media influencer you are? Uh, well, according to my ex, I'm a waste of flesh. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all according to our exes? I know. They have the best input and they're the best suited to give guidance on life. Uh <laughs> right. Right. I know. It's like, hey, check the locks from outside and tell me if they work, you piece of shit. Go ahead. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, yeah, what, what do, what's a uh, social media influencer? What does that mean? What, a, what's my representation there? Um, exactly. very fitness focused, very fitness, nutrition focused. I any chance to drip down to a bikini and run around on the beach and I'm all over it 
and that's what my social media is full of. Um, my sponsors seem to be very happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. Brands, right. jewelry. Yep. <laughs> well, Darren strips down to his bikini and runs around his. Oh, yeah. um, I his fucking female. make Rod Stewart look like an asshole in that freaking <laughs> thing. I'm telling, you, I'm telling you, I got that guy's number, man. When I get out on the beach next to Rod Stewart and my freaking thong, oh, that dude, he doesn't have shit on me. I'm telling you right now. He and my, and I even think my lids even like very competitive of Rod Stewart. Very competitive, yeah. I'd say. Hmm. Oh, anyway. Rod Stewart had some crazy hair. It was awesome. It was oh, cool. Yeah. There's a method to pulling off a completely insane look where it's like stylish. And Rod Stewart just he nailed it 100 percent He did. He's also yep. he's he's got the vote the voice and everything to go with it. Oh my god, yeah. You know, these guys always make fun of me and go, You Michael McDonald? I hear it every single time. Oh boy. Yeah. But at yeah, any we rate, we always bring right. it up every week on the show. We're always, you know. Are you Michael McDonald? Like, you don't know me, but I'm your brother. <laughs> Peggy hey, will come back to you. <laughs> hey, if you guys are at home watching the show, go ahead and please start sharing the episode. All right. So just share it on all your social media. Act like you're an influencer because um, you guys are. <laughs> if you can influence I anything, you're an influencer. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. I still don't know how the hell I got that title. It's I just was fucking around on social media. And then all of a sudden I start getting these weird offers from sponsors. And then I'm being referred to as an influencer and I'm going, huh? Okay. You know sure. why? You know, you know why? I'll tell you why. Tell her. Because when you know a little bit more than somebody else, they think you're a fucking genius. And you're thinking, no, I just know a little bit more about this than you do. I'm telling you because <laughs> I, I I started a web hosting company in 1999, 2000. I knew nothing about it. And long I knew nothing, time ago. A long <laughs> time ago. That was a long time ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, so and everybody was like, oh my God, you're a freaking, you know, internet genius and i'm laughing just going i'm freaking faking my way through all this man i know nothing about this shit i got the guys on the back end doing this thing i'm just the guy smart enough to freaking get business started and sitting there in my boxers pulling in thirty five thousand dollars a month you know back then it was like they're going, you're you're incredible man and i'm sitting there laughing going, I don't know shit about this man i just you know, you know what you know how to ask jeeves <laughs> Remember that? Ooh, I had a friend that coded for Ask Jeeves, actually. He was a Java programmer for them. It's funny. Yeah. That's, oh, shit. That, those were the days, man. That was the, those were exact, those were the days. That's when AltaVista oh, yeah. was there. There was no yep. Yahoo. Uh, and Yahoo was just coming <laughs> on the scene. There was AltaVista. There was Yahoo. Yahoo Serious. Yahoo just can't, yeah. Yahoo just got on the scene there. There was no Google, is what it was. They were new. It was pre Google. Yeah. Pre -Google. The ICQ was reigning supreme. With the little typewriter sound effects. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I mean, Yahoo series. You know that guy with the big wild hair back in the day, you know? Me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you remember me? <laughs> but that's my point, though. When you know more about something that somebody else knows, they think you're like, I'm just sitting there just going, well, you're right, probably right. To you, I am an influencer because I can influence you because I have more information than you do. <laughs> and so there is some truth to that. But yeah, I know. Yeah. Fair enough. I can appreciate that for sure. <laughs> yeah. So but Sunday, we had a great show. Uh, we were live in studio in Beverly Hills. Um, Deborah and I were. Um, and uh, Darren played hooky. So, I mean, that's just, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, no, it was a great. It was a great time. I'm sorry. We couldn't actually really see the comments coming in. The way I was sitting in the studio, um, we couldn't really see the comments. Um, so... It was uh, so. If I didn't, wasn't able to respond to you guys at home, uh, sorry. It was just the way I was angle. Deborah was more focused on the big monitor in front of us than I was, but it was a great show. Um, we had an amazing uh, guest, Gigi Lavangi. Um, her husband was there too, so you know we talked about their uh, fun love story as well. So that was great, man. Seeing him pop up there, man, and. Mm -hmm. Given his take on it, it was funny because she was just kind of like, you know, almost smitten hearing the guy talk, you know, about it. 
That was that was a great little uh, bit, man. I'm sorry I missed that. Boy, I'll tell you what, <laughs> I would love to have been part of that. Well, we'll have to do that. We'll have to do that again. No, we had fun doing a live studio audience. And I mean, you know, we had uh, Lux Media Studios did a great job hosting us and everything. And um, she's back. I'm back. Here yep. she is. <laughs> that's how you influence somebody right there. That is, that's the way I'm just teasing you. <laughs> Leave the mayor so, of history, disappear without warning, reappear without being invited, basically did walk off like an asshole and then crash another party. There you go. <laughs> Ghost the shit out of everybody and show up now. That's perfect. I love That's, it. It sounds like, like all my ex-girlfriends. I mean, come on. <laughs> all, all two of them? No, is that what they said in the restraining order? What'd was that the restraining order that you just said that you do that? <laughs> <and just barely talk? laughs> <laughs> oh guys we got a great show today we have an amazing guest um jasmine st Clair is going to be joining us here in a moment mm -hmm. uh-huh awesome. he's uh darren's got all the videos you know archived and everything and he's been watching oh. them for the last uh 24 hours trying to get oh. caught up oh okay yeah that's right okay <laughs> All right, yeah. So, the, you're watching the wrestling videos for the last. What well, which videos were you talking about? Think I was talking about, dude. You freaking freak. Clearly wrestling. <laughs> of course, I was. was I, I was watching the wrestling. I was watching the wrestling ones. <laughs> now, I was listening to some cool, uh, cool podcasts that she did, and yeah, you know, like with lemme man and shit man it was awesome man that's what i that's what got my interest man is we gotta hear her stories and stuff like yeah, that yeah that, that that's what that's that's the cool stuff that reminds me of my era of hollywood growing up there in the 80s mm -hmm. 90s yeah so to hear her talk about some of those things man that's what my, that was my stomping ground mm -hmm. lived it and uh there was so much that was relatable to that on a lot of levels a lot of personal levels too yeah um not just you know being there in Hollywood, but being around all these people and, and right and blending in and trying to figure out who takes you seriously as a human being versus the celebrity or you know trying to find the blend of the mix and blah blah yeah. blah, blah blah. But anyway, I loved listening to that 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 podcast. It was incredible. Yeah, it's called Crazy Train. We're going to talk to her about that um, here. So let's let's just bring her on. I mean, yeah, let's I do mean, it. We're just talking about her, and we don't even have her on the screen right now. Come on in. Here she is. Ah, uh, there's Jasmine. Hi. Jasmine, Jasmine St. Clair, welcome to the Roger the Wild Child Show. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Are you in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, by any chance? I'm in Boise, Idaho. Okay. Coeur d'Alene is way north. Yes. That's awesome. I love it there. And your hair is like magnificent. I, I swear, Darren, you are just, <laughs> you're like, you're really hot for someone with, um, uh, that's 60 years <laughs> old with, with the lid. You're 60. <laughs> I thought you're like 50. Oh my God. <laughs> I swear. Oh like I get 28 year old guys out of bed all the time, but oh my God, you are like oh. epic. <laughs> Thank you, sister. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's very kind of you. I hear that a lot. You know, I mean, I get that. And I'm like, really just like, look like a scumbag right now. So if I can get those kind of compliments while looking this fucked up, man, I'll take it. You should see me when I clean my shit up, man. But anyway, no, I'm just teasing. Are you no, single? No, I'm not single. My boyfriend, oh. man, and I have been together for a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. I'll ask him though if you know he's cool with you know something weird, but I, I doubt it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so Jasmine, does yes. anybody ever call you Jasmine, or do they go Jasmine or Jasmine, or do they get it right all the time? Um, some people spell it with a Z, and they get really aggravated very fast. Mm -hmm. uh, then some people say jazz mine and um 
that's like another aggravation sometimes. It just depends <laughs> like what mood I wake up in. And yeah. it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like a friend once said to me years ago, it's the Jasmine crazy train. It wakes up like you don't know where it'll end up. Like I'll keep, <laughs> I'll always keep to like whatever obligations I have work-wise or anything scholastically. But after mm -hmm. that, it's like whatever happens outside of there, <laughs> like in the street or like when I wake up in the morning, whatever I tweet, I cannot be held accountable. Like I still have this kick on like vanilla ice. I think he's hot. I'm not sure. I'm still You're trying not to figure sure. That. <laughs> does oh, he still right have the him. same, does he still have the same lid, that kind of like flat top weird thing? I, I don't know. I haven't seen him. In you a got a problem. Yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook as my DJ revolves it. <laughs> <laughs> But what's hot right. about him is he was busted for drag racing. So I ride motorcycles. I've been doing okay, that, that for like so 15 cool. years. I think it is. It's hot. Yeah. Like, it just yeah. makes you want to like. Like what yeah, kind of thing? <laughs> as far as celebrity criminal records go, having drag racing as a, you know, being framed as a negative. No, 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 no. Fuck that. <laughs> the, the first thing when cool. I, when I. Like the the little car that I drive now, when I first bought it, within a week I got into a street race just because I could. I've had that baby <laughs> born. I've had two street races. We found a quarter mile straight away and just gave her. It was beautiful. So Love. to hear Vanilla Ice busted for drag racing, no, 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 celebrate him. That's hot. <laughs> That's now. right. But wait, how do you like street race? Because I have a motorcycle and I get these jerk offs. And am I allowed to say that word? That's yeah, totally no, cool, man. There are a lot of jerk offs. Out There's there. no filter on this. Fuck show. those jerk offs. With their anyway. Teslas, right? And their small penises yep. trying to race, like <laughs> outrace a motorcycle. It's like it's not going to happen. It has like right. a sports bike torque engine. But how do you yeah. organize like a street race when you're in a car? Like, how do you do you say, hey, let's go? Do you like, what do you do? I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's well, some fucking meathead just like, Dee! Okay. Well, they so, look hey. at her. They're like, "Oh yeah." So, what do I they tell it. you? Do they say, "Hey, let's street race"? Like, what do they do? Right. They sometimes, just go, sometimes there's a, some very not exactly fully legal clubs that where it's oh. people who have similar interests. They're like, "All right, you know what? Sunrise will be at such and such a place." Um, other times, it's like with me. I, I happen to see someone familiar. I, I was at a red light. I saw a familiar face. We had a big straightaway, and when I'm like. I know you and I know what you're into. So we gave the signal and once the light changed, we were off. It was so good. I love, <laughs> I love it. it. I so love do you it. just go up to the street lights and just kind of like look at the person next to you and you like nod your head and they're like, okay. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> yep. <Boom. laughs> like grease yes, or yeah. some shit. Man. Right, and exactly. Then, grease. Grease yeah. lightning. <laughs> you just kind of look over. Awesome. I'm going to start freaking... doing that with Teslas. I, I <laughs> oh my God. Absolutely. That. Yeah, no, the worst I ever did, just yeah, I just knocked out someone's window once. Like I had marbles and just, it just I keep it in a little thing, like in a sock in my pocket. And like when they try to cut you off, you're supposed to kick the window in with your boot or like if you have heavy <laughs> rings, but I don't have heavy rings. A lot of my friends do, but they're guys. And then you just take the marbles and bash their window in. Like I don't know if it's really <laughs> legal, but I think it's like a form of self-defense. Hey, that's a great idea. And you know what? You know you still have that ring with the two red ruby eyes, right? Oh, from the from the stripper? Yeah. What? Oh, I tried to. Oh. So I married the stripper at my bachelorette party, and I'm trying to find him on Facebook. Like, I want to see what. Did you he looks find like. him? Haunts or some shit? Wasn't his name Haunts? Haunts? Best but he has no profile photo. Oh no! Of course oh, not. Oh, you found him, but he. Got how old do you think the guy is yeah. now? Is it really his uh, profile, though? It could have been somebody just claiming to be him. Jasmine. It's a common name, like John Smith. Yeah. Right. For yeah, Das Smith. Gut. <laughs> das Gut. Hey, das uh, uh, das Gut. Hey, so Jasmine, are you are you Brazilian? Is that what it is? My mother is Brazilian. My father is Dutch. Uh, I lived in Brazil for five years. Oh, so no wonder you have a little bit of that Dutch thing, you know, Das Gut. <laughs> but they call of... you a Latina, right? Um, that's one of many words like people use to describe me. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess they say that. Yeah. Uh, I would follow go you. So far. Huh? You follow Portuguese. Eu falo Portuguese. Sim. Oh wow! Follow <laughs> oh. Portuguese. Yeah, that's the Brazilian. <laughs> 
<laughs> I grew up in San Diego with a bunch of like people that were literally from Portugal. They they have a little they they have a little bit different of a of a sound, but everything is the, like you know I know follow Portuguese, you know I know stupid. Okay, everything is you got the soupish going to the festa, <laughs> you know everything is this that shish. that's the Portuguese thing. But the Brazilians are a little bit different, but they can kind of get it together. Am I right or am I? They get it together in many ways more than one. Um, it's a it's a whole other culture. I say it's a culture where people are just very happy to live every day mm -hmm. and see their friends and family. It's a very <clears throat> humble but chock full of party. Culture. You're right. That's exactly I mean, how it's all amazing. of amazing. My... I love yeah. it. Like I love being there. Um, I love my fans. I just Brazil's amazing. I was in the carnival twice, which was like the great, that's the greatest show on earth, not Ringling mm -hmm. Brothers, but that just, there's no word to describe it. Like there's mm -hmm. no adjective in any language to describe it. Is that kind of like the Portuguese, what they call the festa, which is the fiesta, you know? So it's festa. probably something like that where they carry this little, like, you know, the queen and the, you know, on this little <laughs> board and all this stuff. It's no, really, really we have cool. floats. We're more sophisticated. We, oh. had <laughs> we had drugs and we had Jack and Coke in that. The way it works is this, whatever <laughs> Samba school you're a member of, if you win the year before, you go through Samba Drum last. And like, there's so much media coverage. Like my family saw me on TV, but on the way there, so you get someone to do your makeup. These girls are doing Coke. Like, I don't really want any of that, but they had Jack Daniels as well. I'm like, okay, I'll have some of that. Yeah. And the theme of our Samba school is health and uh, well-being. Mm -hmm. So maybe that contributes to it. But they're really yeah. bitchy, actually, a lot of them. Like, when you see the other Samba school, like, everyone just gets kind of catty and just rude. It's like, okay. It's <laughs> oh, very that competitive. That fun. Yeah. Yes. That so let me weird. ask you something. You got a TV. You got a, not a TV show. You got a podcast. It's called Crazy Train. Yes. Okay. So, and that's, like, your big project going on right now. If I've listened to a few of your episodes and – you know, go ahead. Tell us about um, what you got going on with that, and you know, and go ahead and promote it as well, because I want we definitely want our uh, listeners and viewers to be able to check your show out. Um, so originally it started off as a one woman show called A Weird Kind of Fame. Mm -hmm. So I went through the whole improv, like it's not comedy, because when you do too much comedy in a one person show, you lose the gist and the meat of the story. So. I was writing this autobiography for years, which I had not have not come out with. And uh, then I put it into like a one woman show and I was doing that all pre pandemic. So then this freaking thing happened and whatever you want to call it. And um, mm -hmm. I, I just didn't know like what was next. I want to, someone said, do a podcast, do a podcast. I don't want a freaking podcast. Cause like everyone in the freaking cat has one, everyone in the damn mother. It's like everyone, <sighs> who has some kind of stupid agenda to push has one, not you guys, by the way, or nobody that I know. Of Everybody else. Everybody else. So like, me. Yeah. But what are they going to listen to it for? Cause we have cancel culture and I'm in the middle of this whole era of shock culture, pushing that down people's throats. Cause I think it's awesome. Yeah. So finally my manager <laughs> set me up with this um, really cool guy who's hot as fuck, by the way. I just have to say that. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to move to me. He could totally do that. Um, <laughs> and he's a metalhead, and he had this great way to do the podcast. So it's all the stories that will not make it to the stage, but are on the podcast. And then um, I have some guests on there that I will be getting. I've had one so far. Uh, and... It's been great. So my whole goal is to just build up on that more. And then I'll redo the one woman show. Like I'll start reperforming it in June. Like I suffer from major stage fright and that's no secret. Um, everyone knows that who's ever spoken to me. Anyone that's been in an acting class knows it's gotten better. But I feel like when you take improv classes just to help with your acting, I feel as though if you're on stage by yourself, you've got nowhere to run because there's no one that's going to have your back. So oh, I joined yeah. like an improv team and all that. So, um, yeah, it was fun. I met like some of my best friends to this day in school. And it was really scary because like now I'm in another class in like another year of a Meisner class in L.A. And 
people kind of know, but they don't know I was an ex porn star. Do they know to what degree? Do they know about the Book of World Records? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> then they watched The Dark Side of the 90s from Vice. I did TV. not know that. You're an ex porn star? You didn't know that. Like, I'm fucking blonde. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I'm a liberal. Let's go there now. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, the era that the era that you were doing porn was like that was the golden age. There was so yeah. much more in the production. It's I'm so bored with what's currently produced to a large degree. <laughs> and like when you were doing it, that was that was absolutely fucking beautiful. There was like artistry to it. I, I still have my VHS tapes from then. Like I'm not even kidding. I, yeah, I love pullouts. I miss that I, era. It was fun. Pullouts, yeah, my office was decorated with pullouts, like posters from Club Magazine. So, <laughs> really? oh my yeah. god, yeah, are you single pilot or something? Pilot. Like, what guy would not want that? Oh my god, you're not single, right? <laughs> okay. I'm single, yes, I am. How the hell did that happen? Like, someone tell me, like, how does that happen? Uh, yeah, it was it was very glamorous. Now it's like you see these guys with these bitch buns on their head, and they're <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's <laughs> oh and it's like who like who wants to have sex with that? Like that's just hey, well, not only do they have bitch buns, but they got bitch hips too, man. And, it's like, <laughs> and these skinny jeans yeah. and bitch hips. It's like where you're voluptuous, dude, down there. Where do those bitch hips come from? My God, and then the man. girls, they don't even like in these magazines. It's like where are you getting them from? The freaking you know out in the street it's not appealing i don't know if younger guys today appreciate breast implants so i went out with this 23 year old guy i had no idea like how he knew about me he was um <laughs> managing doyle or the misfits he was a stage manager so he was how old was he when i dated him oh he's 22 when we went out we spent oh, okay. in Atlantic city he's in the navy now we talk um but <laughs> i just said you even like in the navy exactly <laughs> He's not gay. I can tell you that. Well, no. um, hey, baby, talk, baby, talk, baby, <laughs> talk, your, talk dirty to me, honey. Ten four, big buddy. <laughs> talk, talk filthy to um, me, honey. Ten four, good buddy, rubber ducky. Oh yeah, say some more of that. Honey. <laughs> but I thought boys that age didn't like implants because they're used to these girls that like basically castrate them emotionally and castrate them into hitting on them. I think it's great to get hit on. Like I do cat calls all the time, but I gotta be careful what I say. I told some guy I wanted to chloroform him and stuff him in my suitcase. Oh, he didn't do oh, see, I appreciate that kind of thing. A line like that, see, that's, that's right. my attention. And if, a, okay, if a woman like you is gonna say something like that to me, I will give you my phone number. Like, <laughs> so I, don't, I want more than your phone number, baby. I mean, <laughs> I and I love everything uh, about that. <laughs> See, this is what I mean. Like, guys should be happy to have women like us around, like these young guys. We could teach them a thing or two. And, you know, I've gotten into arguments with girls like half my age just for saying something stupid. It's like, you need to shut the fuck up. Like, when I grew up, <laughs> say shit like that, I'll break Guys the say I'll stupid shit all the time. No, yeah, girls. But she talk, girl, girls. girls. She's talking about young girls. girls. dumb shit, too. There's, there's exactly. no one who's exempt from saying something dumb. Yeah. Um, you haven't fucking the, lived long enough, dummy. Get the fuck <laughs> off my yard. Yeah. You know what, though? You know what? When I was, you know, when I was a teenager, we'd be lucky if we were walking through an alley and found a Playboy, man. You know, we were like, oh, oh. so stoked, you know? And that that was, like, totally cool for us. But now, I, I mean, honestly, I hear all kinds of shit, man, you know, like, from people that are into the new world of pornography out there. And it's like... <laughs> There's like, well, I, it's so different, I suppose. I mean, you know, I, there's like midget this, and this one dresses up like Barney, and this is fucking what's her, I'm thinking, what the? F I guess there's something <laughs> for everybody. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, I mean, I don't know. They're going, yeah, all these weird things. are. I'm going, well, okay. You know, but I mean, honestly, I mean, I just sound like an old guy because it's like, really, that exists out there? But I guess that's like next to nothing. I mean, I'm sure it's like even way darker than that. But I guess it, it, should I say, even say dark. It's like whatever your fancy is, I suppose. But like, you know, what am I going to do? You know, hey, dress up as Dora the Explorer and I'm going to fucking be, you know, Barney or some shit. And we're going to do something. I mean, it's or out there. Baby Jesus and like masturbate with a cross or something. Like who would ever do that? Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, that's what it's exactly right. I know one person who did that, like who's in this room. It was awesome, but um, 
Yeah, I mean, I just, I like controversy to some degree, but like, I don't know. I just think it's one of those natural things that just comes with being around there. Like, I didn't realize what I was a part of. So I was out with someone one night and this woman keeps giving me these dirty looks. So I walk over to her table and I drank her drink. I put it back down. I'm like, how can I help you? <laughs> I saw that one on books TV and wow, that's disgusting. You have no shame. It's like, okay, so you're watching me on trash. It was, it was uh, the episode was called Trash Talk TV. And mm-hmm. that's totally was that Jerry Springer or what? Huh? Was that, was that, okay, was that when you were on Jerry Springer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that was, was that was beautiful. Oh, thank you. I loved it. I mean, it was fun arguing with helmet haired skanks who had no life but to be on national TV. It shows you what a beautiful country America is. It lets yes. losers on TV during the daytime. <laughs> See what I mean? You get it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the woman That's- said she saw me on the show. Um, then I brushed up against her husband's chair on purpose. So I said, yeah, I'm glad you liked it. I said, the next time, don't stare at people. <laughs> <laughs> I love <laughs> and I it. I took her drink and like walked off with it. I hope That's you know, great. I didn't get COVID or anything. Well, she, no, actually, she just got that drink. Yeah, I didn't get COVID or anything like that. But <laughs> That's still great. That's a great story. She's sitting there going, oh, my God, she might have had some guy's penis in her mouth. I can't drink out of this. <laughs> actually, actually, I did right before I went out to dinner with him. Of course I did. Come on. That's great, man. Aww. Aww. Here you go, honey. Have great. your drink back. <laughs> have a little uh, taste yeah, of this. And that same one. lady, that same girl, doesn't want to admit that she just had the bus boy's dick in her mouth like ten minutes before. <laughs> She's why she has to look down on because she could feel a conflict for blowing a bus boy. <laughs> right, her husband's <laughs> like, "Well, she was taking a long time in the bathroom. Where's my yeah. wife?" Yeah, exactly. he's got his little bitch one going. It's all good. <laughs> no problem. But yeah, it's just a different world, like with social media and like the beauty of existing in like various fields of entertainment 25 years ago, way before the internet is that's what it was like. There is no mm-hmm. documentation to this or that. There's no documentation to backstage at a wrestling show with mm-hmm. everything. It's just all hearsay. Yeah. Um, so how did you get into cool. wrestling? Ah, <laughs> I grew up watching it. <laughs> Then I'm here like to laugh. Um, so I was fortunate enough, like it, I was at this weird stage in my career. Like I wasn't a porn star. I was like the voice of shock culture. I was this figure in it. And I worked for a gentleman named Rob Black who owned a company called Extreme Associates. So I was in that business a total of two and a half, three years max. And he started a wrestling company alongside a porn company. And that totally, like, I grew up watching Sherry Martel, Sab- like, Terry Funk and all of that. Mm-hmm. And I started taking wrestling lessons from an original glow girl, which was cool. So <laughs> I, I was doing some stuff with Rob with his company called XPW Wrestling, Extreme Pro Wrestling, which is now coming back. They have a show in November in Rochester. And I just, I loved it. There was this adrenaline. And and then he introduced me to the Dudley boys from ECW wrestling. He would have a lot of ECW wrestlers there, like retired ones and current ones watching the show. Um, He and I didn't really end on the best terms. I'll be honest. I didn't really want to do porn anymore. I just wanted to wrestle and that's it. I didn't give a fuck about porn. I didn't care. I didn't care. Just, I didn't give a shit about it. I never really did. And uh, then I spoke to the Dudley boys. They introduced me to Paul Heyman again. They reintroduced me. Then we made this deal and I just quit cold turkey. I went straight into wrestling. I was at the next ECW pay-per-view. But before then, I was also in Memphis, Tennessee, working for Jerry Lawler. And I was still wrestling. Like I was training wrestling and I loved it. So it was, I mean, I was taking a pounding in another way, of course, but I just... (laughs) It was. Uh, there's like a certain rush or something. It's a certain type of person that doesn't mind like getting thrown around by 300 getting pounds. Slammed. Yeah, getting, getting slammed. Yeah, getting slammed. Then um, because, of my, because of my size, I didn't do as many matches as I would have liked to. Have, mm-hmm. But I like being a manager. I think that was a really good place for women in the ring. I don't feel as though they did, that they promote that in this culture nowadays. Um. So hopefully XPW Wrestling brings back 
the women managers who would catfight and go at it because that is what sells. That's Sex the best women. part of the wrestling is watching the, yeah. the women managers all beat each other's asses and, <laughs> and stuff like that. And you are you go watch a wrestling match for the managers, not the wrestlers. And then, exactly. You know, yeah. The I wrestlers. mean, it's fun. What's the wrestler going to wear that night? Is he going to wrestling? Table? <laughs> wrestling. So you how, wrestling? I love it. Huh? How did three P? How did three PW come about? Oh, so that piece of shit I was with the blue meanie, right? <laughs> um, I just, you know, well, there's like there are two sides to that. So he came up with the name. That's true, but it was my idea to start something because no one wanted to hire his loser ass anywhere. And I was still working for other federations like XWF, Jimmy Hart's one, and okay. um. He came up with the idea and like, I just got sick of his shit. Like he hit me pretty bad one day, like for reals in real life. And I had like stitches down the side of my forehead. Oh, wow. Oh, that was an ECW. Yeah. It was over some money thing. Cause I was doing better than him and it was something with money. And I just, mm. you know, I walked over to the printer to grab my airline mm. ticket and he fucking headbutts me. Like he headbutts someone in the street. What the fuck? So, Come back. I stayed with him because at the time I was in ECW, I just like it's that whole thing you call commitment in improv. I just committed to the whole thing because I don't want to bring that stupid drama. And, you know, I made a great little crossover there. So don't bring the drama. Just deal with the shit and deal with him later. Fine. Mm -hmm. We started 3PW Wrestling. So I started. I know one really knows this, but I could say <laughs> now. Um, of course. I was just sick of his shit. He was getting like more unhealthy. And you as a fitness woman, you know, like how important it is to be healthy. So I oh started God, fucking yeah. around with this wrestler, this guy, Kid Cash. I wish I like continued that because he was like, seriously, he's like the lay of the century. But anyway, um, <laughs> we didn't continue that relationship because I had a boyfriend I totally forgot about. Uh, oh, but, duh. <laughs> yeah, duh. Oh, my <laughs> God. He lived here sometimes. He must have been really um, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I forgot. No, I was just sick of him. And I just, I don't like people that aren't motivated. Like, that's one thing. Is yeah. I always have to be with someone that's motivated and driven, not a workaholic, but just someone that wants to be driven and doesn't pull this pity card every day. Cause it's to the point where you just want to slice your wrist up in every single way possible. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so that's like 3PW came to an end when I just got sick of the greed, the egos. And I just didn't show up to one of the shows and, Contrary to popular belief, I didn't take off with anyone's money because it wasn't really anyone's money anyway. It mm -hmm. was um, it was money that was there. So they had to go get the money for that show some other way. I was just sick of using my contacts to help them. Um, yeah. And then it went under after that. But I would never start another federation. I would work with them again. I would work for XPW Wrestling in the drop of a hat. Once again, because Rob Black, I feel, is a creative genius. And outside of adult films, I feel as though he's been given, like, the second chance to do something magnificent. And I know he's going to succeed. I think he's going to do really well. Very awesome. cool. Hey, we have... Him oh, go ahead. One Sorry. Of, one of the super cool things about 3PW is that you're cited as being the first female owner of a wrestling federation. I mean, yeah. Stephanie McMahon, she inherited it. So, I mean, she's an important figure, but she was born into that, whereas you started something. That is super cool. Way oh, cool. Watching. I'm like, I never <laughs> oh, um, Yeah, it's it just, is. I would say, like, I've always been industrious as a kid growing <laughs> up. Mm -hmm. um, I used to make, like, friendship bracelets and sell them. I used to make jewelry. And I started doing that again, which is a positive thing in life for me. Because when you do that at your adult age, it means like somehow it's therapeutic. Like no yeah. shrink is going to, I don't want to go to a shrink because it'll make me too rational. And then I lose my, I just lose myself that way. So mm -hmm. I am, um, I, I, I make jewelry, a lot of it. Then I buy vintage jewelry. I do yard sales sometimes, like big antique markets. I have an Etsy store. Um and I really like it. So I just like anything. That's your therapy. That's there your therapy, go. right? You could be my therapist. All of you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, but I just mean like the, the jury, yeah. making the jury, as I say here and there. The jury. Making some jury. <laughs> but, you know. Where are you in Idaho? Are all of you in Idaho? I'm in, Na I'm in Nashville. And you? I'm in Victoria, B.C., Canada. Oh, I love Canada. 
And you're in <laughs> Idaho. That's where I'm in Mark Idaho. Furman lives. Yeah, Mark Furman yeah. lives in Coeur d'Alene. Yeah. So there's a bunch of questions up here. Yes. People are asking some questions. Do you guys mind if we uh, jump into some of these questions? Roger, you want to... Uh, Okay, so uh, shoe shine boy boxing, um, kind of related to uh, wrestling. But he, uh, we got Dave from the four oh eight. Um, his question for you is: Can Jasmine tell us if her career took a turn for the better after her Howard Stern interview? Um, a hundred percent, I'd say. Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't know because I never saw myself as anyone with any type of like star anything or celebrity, to be honest with you, I just saw myself as the same girl that grew up listening to the Howard Stern show. And I, I sent in my album. It was wheels of steel by cream to get upgraded. So I feel as though it went well. Uh, I don't know what our relationship was. I just knew it was a good one. Um, I wish I was still on his show. Cause I really liked him as a person. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wait till you see what happens to your ratings after being on here with Darren Chef. You're gonna oh, I see can't it. wait. <laughs> I'm telling you right <laughs> now, man, see shit, man. Howard hasn't seen it. Nobody has. They're gonna, yeah. I'm afraid. In- uh, <laughs> we're we're going to forward you this should. episode to Howard after we're done, so he's going to uh, review it. Yeah. <laughs> so what else are we? What, like what, a right wing nutshell. I actually have a caller on the phone here. Let's uh, talk from, to the caller. But yeah, from the 408. Wait a second. Would this possibly be Dave from the 408? It is. Hey, Roger. Hey, hey. Jasmine, how you doing? Big fan from the old days. Hi. <laughs> What's um, up, so dude? are you in San Jose? Like, where are you from that you're 408? Is that is that San Jose, California? He just All right, he's up done. Okay. Yeah, he ghosted, your ass. Ass. he ghosted oh. your ass. He ghosted you. No, I'm kidding. God, his dick's going to fall off. I want, I want Mike Lindell to call into the show. I want the Mr. Pillow guy. I want to talk to him like so bad. Yeah, <laughs> me, too. To <laughs> me too. Me too, Mike. Cross. <laughs> we got the really friends with uh, Speech Impediment Man from the Howard Stern show. He's one of the whack packers. <clears throat> oh, those are good. Do you remember, was, do you remember are... Speech? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, he would I ask do. all those. <laughs> Yeah, that was okay, some yeah. great moments. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I'm still a fan of Beetlejuice. Oh, I fucking love that guy. Beetlejuice? Beetlejuice? Yeah. Beetlejuice? Oh, my, oh God. my God. That guy's the He's best. crazy. I love, I love that guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I ran into him at a bachelor party like years later um, that my friend was having. Oh. I was there actually just as a guest at my friend's bachelor party. We went to school together and I saw Beetlejuice like, Going around, I'm like, wait a second, how did you get him? I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> yeah, it was a wild bachelor party. There was like a dog, there are these skanks, and then there's Beetlejuice and there's strippers. I'm like, what the? It was like, it was crazy. It was New York City. It sounds like a New York party. <laughs> yeah, I like New York parties. You just don't know where they end up. I mean, once you go out, like one thing with me is when you go out, like you cannot have a real plan. We could start mm-hmm. somewhere and maybe a few things are planned, but if oh, you yeah. just like plan to shit out way too far in advance, it just doesn't get interesting. Oh no, you're already bored of it before you leave the house. If the plans are yeah. too structured, no, 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 no. Once you bring in a, a midget and a drag queen, you're you got the whole. Now you're ready to roll, and it's gonna get weird. Just saying. I love that shit. I love <laughs> that sounds like a good. I love one. anything crazy. Um, yeah, I'll totally take questions from your fans. You know, I'll be honest. Like you seemed really cool at first when we were chatting. I just wasn't sure until I saw everyone by face. And I have to say, like, obviously you're pleasing on the eyes and your hair is just amazing. My God. <laughs> oh, my hair? No, not you. Yeah, you. Uh, your glasses are cute. <laughs> oh, thanks. Are you talking I about like them? glasses. They're cute sometimes. Like, oh, yeah, guys, the... like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are cool, too. Like, guys with glasses are hot. This guy I totally want to hook up with. He's from Holland. And we know each other because I go to Europe all the time. But like we knew each other when I lived in Norway. I seriously want to have sex with this guy. And I don't know if he's got a girlfriend or a wife. Like I really don't give a shit. I just want him for like one weekend. And that's it. Because he's smart. He's like yeah, these are my Tom Ford glasses. Hello, Tom Ford. Tom Ford. 
<laughs> yeah, these are Tom Ford glasses. I'm a Persol guy from way back, but I decided to go for oh Persol. Yeah, I, but these I are. But I, I, I've That's been wearing right. Persols for <laughs> since the '80s, since I lived in Hollywood, and I just switched. I still have Persols. I got a couple pair of them, but I, these are. I just went for something a little bit different here. But I love Persols. I just, they're, you know, they're the only glasses that are still made by hand. It takes over a week to make one pair of Persols in, in Italy. They still make them by hand one at a time, and it takes a week to make those. And that's why they're classics. That's why they're the quality they are. And they are like, I, I mean, I'm, I love these Tom Fords, but yeah, I love my Persols. Gotta those love are them. classy. Like my ex has them. And they look super hot on him. And he had like transitionals. Um, yeah. I encouraged him to look, like learn how to ride a motorcycle so he could go riding. And mm -hmm. he would wear it all the time because I guess you could see better that way. Um, yeah. 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 But he was like very hot with those. Super hot. Mm -hmm. Well, One question. Go, go ahead. Huh? Okay. One question we got is how did it feel to be outsold by Jenna Jameson? Or I'll, I'll sell, never was I'll, actually. I'll sell, <laughs> I'll sell Jenna Jameson. Oh, how did it feel to be outsell her? That you outsold her. Yeah. Yeah, of course I did. Yeah. Um, fuck yeah, fuck guess, she did. <laughs> stupid bitch. So, oh, fuck yes, she did. <laughs> Check out Roger. Oh, fuck yes, she did. You love <laughs> stuff. I know it. Um, you know, I didn't know because I really never thought of her as anything except just a regular run of the mill blonde. Um, I didn't know she had a problem with me. I just knew that when I had a show in Vegas, my own show, uh, she like came by with some, she had some kind of trailer trash do going on and she came by my show. It's like, for what? Then I remembered Howard said I had, like I was his highest rated guest. But to me, it wasn't that big of a deal because it just, it was fucking porn for crying out loud. Who cares? Like <laughs> if people really take themselves that seriously and cry over getting an award at a porn show, you've got to be crying. <laughs> this is like a much bigger life out there. I hate to tell you. I just That's didn't so give true. It. And I just, I really didn't care. I think it's awesome because I think brunettes rule um, in that business. I, I One of the first things my manager then told me is that brunettes do really well. I'm like, what brunette? Selena Steele, obviously, because she's beautiful. Uh, Terry Weigel, who's like drop dead gorgeous. She's like married now. Um, and mm. I guess like, I just, I didn't know. Like I had no clue, but I guess it's a, it's great. Um, yeah. You know, it's funny. <laughs> That's funny the way you said that, you know, you're right. What? Thinking, you know, just thinking about it. It's like, somebody's all excited here's the awards and they're all crying going yes you get the best award for the fake <laughs> orgasm it's like oh my god they're the fucking crying and shit. there it is for best anal scene oh my god yeah oh my god You're, and the husbands are i'm proud of you honey i'm so proud of you i taught you so well <laughs> How many times the recipients will thank their parents and thank <laughs> God? <laughs> like, right? You must be so freaking proud. I got awards. They were like, I got sent to the Hall of Fame, which I don't really care about. Then I got the like, um, best selling tape of like 96 or 96, whatever year it was. I was like, okay, but I, I mean, you sure as hell didn't see me crying, you know? I'm not gonna cry over that. Jasmine, <laughs> like, that's, that's what makes you. That's what makes you so fucking funny and cool, man. I mean, the same thing in the music business, man. Growing up around all these fucking people, man. You had these divas out there, and then you had really cool down-to-earth people and shit. It's like you get it in every industry. But you, it's obvious talking to you, you know, you're like got a really funny sense of humor. You've got, you're really smart. You've done a lot of cool things and shit. Man. I, no, I'm not just saying that. I mean, you know, listen, honestly, you know, there's a lot of people that are in your industry, you could be sitting here just looking at the screen all deer in the head, like, what, what now? You know, I mean, and you, and yeah, exactly. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, that's hysterical, the awards thing. What a funny imagery just to think about. Yeah, I'd like to thank my mother. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, Thanks for giving me the tits that I have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Getting honey. upset over like losing out to an award. No, to be fair, uh, like I've, I've never met Jenna Jameson or anything like that, but to be fair, like in her book, she does talk about being on, like on and off meth and dealing with addiction and at the peak of addiction being the absolute worst human being ever. Like she does, she talks about that in her book and that there is a sense of remorse after the fact, 
like during sobriety where she's looking back going, God, that was a piece of shit to everyone. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so like, I like kid yourself. That. Yeah, you're, like, you're, 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 you're a piece of shit while you're high and not high. You're still a piece of shit. Like I know after sobriety, there are some yep. things uh, she was still after. You know, when she was sober, she was still okay. saying shit. I'm there wrestling oh, way out of the business. She's like, oh, well, someone said to her, oh, this is so good. Jasmine's doing this. Oh, I could do the same thing. Just one phone call. That's like, all right, you know, seriously, whatever. Oh, so, is, man. No one needs that. It makes you yeah, want to, you know, compete against her more and just, you know, really no, just. It's not my competition. What she, she's like, what has kids now? And she married some Israeli guy that's like a diamond, like some diamond conspiracy, some whatever bullshit. She's married. She's got kids. She, she had her last set of kids taken away from her. Um, oh my God. But her, now her current daughter, okay, good for her. That's nice. So I'm not a mom. I don't want to be a mom. Never did. Uh, mm -hmm. I've always been very much. Um, a free spirit. Like I was riding a motorcycle as a teenager illegally. I still do. Well, up until about eight years ago, I got my license up. So yeah, uh, you know, I just do my thing and I love to entertain. I can't wait to get back on the road with the one woman show and go nationally with it. Um, mm -hmm. I want to go to other countries with it. I speak French, I speak Spanish, Portuguese, Norwegian, and German. So that's one I thing I can do that other people cannot do. And like, the whole birth of the one woman show and for it happening, I have like second city to thank for that all the way because mm -hmm. the director for the show was from there. Um, if I didn't have like my friends there helping me along the way, I don't think it ever would have come up. It's the only thing I like, I don't know anything else really. And I'm not going to get hired anywhere exactly to work doing anything. So, and that's totally fine. Um, I'm happy with my branding, which I can nice. honestly say now. <sighs> <laughs> right. I love that you were illegally riding a motorcycle. That's that, yeah. that just seems to be so much more the way to do it. It just seems more fitting. <laughs> well, I don't know you needed a just license. Saying. There's some dipshits out there who have a bike license that are doing yeah. stupid things like going yeah. between the only reason you lane split is when all the cars are stopped. Don't go doing that shit when they're moving cars. Mm -hmm. And they give normal they give people like myself that are defensive defensive riders a really bad rap. I mean, I do lane slip, but when everything's just stopped. And if there's a cop in front of me, I'll go right behind them so I could look at their ass. <laughs> <laughs> there is something awesome about a uniform and and just having like a holster and yeah. Anyhow. Oh boy. Oh, yeah. Woo, you calm you down. You better down. look at her taking a drink there <laughs> after that one. Shoot. Right? Yeah, of course. No, the cop sure. that was... Uh, he was near the, he was at a restaurant that I eat at. They had some kind of an incident there because Santa Monica is like, it's a lot of homeless people and crazies and idiots who keep voting like these leaders in, in this area. So something happened. And then um, the cop that showed up, he was really hot. He had his aviator shades on and everything. <laughs> I'm like checking him out. So the female cop, he's like, look, he used to be a Calvin Klein underwear model. I'm like, Hell yeah. <laughs> so I'm just hoping I run into him one day in the street. Yeah, I was checking his ass out. It was kind of really dirty. <laughs> Thinking dirty things, is that what you said? Back in when I was working security, I used to kind of make a game out of seeing if I could get a cop to like give me his phone number, give me their phone number. So like <laughs> <laughs> nice. Or see if there was an unnecessary exchange of information. That was it was kind of like yeah, I, I kind of like seeing if I how doable that was. Surprisingly oh, doable. Right. You know, when there's a challenge, man, it makes you really want to go after it when you think that there's something to I go know. after. You know, like one of the things, this, this, uh, I'm going to bring it up. But what I did oh, yes. in Hollywood for a lot of years is I was a hairdresser and makeup artist in the film industry. Oh. And yeah, you know, I did a lot of the early MTV videos and things like that. And so that was my career. I was the only straight guy in the industry. So what was funny was, you know, all my gay friends were always, they were trying their darndest to get to me. You know, this is when I was in my prime, you know, just 20, you know, 20s to 30s. So, but, but my thing was, is I was always trying to get the lesbian chick. I was, I was trying to get, get her to, 
you know, the ones that I worked with, you know, so while the gay guys were working on me, I was like working on the lesbian chick that I thought, oh God, I'm going to be able to get this. I'm going to crack this one. But I never could, man. It was just, and just like they couldn't with me, you know, but it was hysterical. It was like this, okay, you know, I'm going to try that here. <laughs> it's more of a yeah. challenge for you, right? It was, it was yeah, a challenge. I came really close, man. The one took me home to her place, and then she's like, "Oh my god, my girlfriend could come home any minute." And I'm like, I was like, <laughs> so I was like "Ah, shit!" Anyway, but uh, <laughs> I thought that was a story you, you guys needed to know that story. Yeah. Yes, we you did. Still try. You could still try it. I'm that trying was... to like still have sex with this cop I met last year, who like came to my rescue. And I have his phone number. We've gone out in a couple of days, but I just want to fuck him, really. That's well, all. wait a minute. When you say came to my rescue, Get to the point. when you say came to my rescue. Oh, I'm OK. Um, so I live right by the riots in Santa Monica. And okay. uh, a couple of days later, um, I was outside in the street. I was dressed. I had my, one of my dresses on. And some guy who didn't live in the neighborhood grabbed my breast. So I'm there trying to pull my handgun. I'm like, maybe I shouldn't do that because I'm not supposed to really have this. I forgot that part of it. Oh, yes. So I pulled my knife on him and I, I slashed him pretty good. Then he goes running off. There was a guy sitting in his car who was there repairing like the Gap store, working on it. And he saw the whole thing. He called the cops. Mm. Then the cops came. Then the guy gets out of the car. I'm like, oh, <laughs> hi. I'm just so traumatized <laughs> <laughs> I took a photo of the guy and then I gave it to him. That's how I had his phone number. Then we were talking. Um, he lives in Ventura County, but there's one problem. He's got kids. So that's just, I don't oh go boy. out with guys with kids. Yeah. The uh, reason I was asking him that is because I have a friend here in Nashville and she was also in the adult industry for a, mm -hmm. quite a while. And she had a stalker that freaking was like from out of state. And this went on for 10 fucking years for this poor girl. And uh, I just saw her recently and she was like introducing me to her new boyfriend and he's a cop. And I'm like, I asked her, I said, is that fucking weirdo from up in Massachusetts still like fucking like doing weird shit? She goes, yeah. I go, man, some of these motherfuckers, man, they're talking like 10 years just, and just crazy shit showing up here and there. I mean, really scary for her. She got out of the industry a, while, a long time ago, but even out of it, the guy still is fucking weird and shit. Anyway, it was just like, so when I heard you say that about the cop, I'm like, well, she, it was funny because she goes, yeah, here's my new boyfriend. And I'm like, oh, nice to meet you, you know? And and then she says, he's a cop. I go, good, you need him, man. You know, this <laughs> yeah. fucking lunatic out there. Never know. That's really weird because I had a guy waving a handgun outside of my hotel room, and yet the cops wouldn't do anything. Then he's at New Jersey at MonsterCon doing some shit. Oh, we can't do anything. I finally had a restraining order against him, but I felt like it should have been reciprocated wherever I went. Right, that's me... exactly right. Exactly. So my friend was murdered by her ex-boyfriend. Uh, she was engaged to Drew Carey briefly. They broke up. And he threw her from three stories high in her house. Oh, it was in the God. news. Now, she had oh, a restraining wow. order against him prior to that. So... What I'm trying to wrap my head around to this day is why is it that when we were at the Hollywood Sheriff's Station two weeks before she was murdered, I was with her and then she's telling the cops about this. Oh, well, you know, your restraining order expired. So we, after her death, we tried to get this law pushed called Amy's Law, where the restraining order never expires unless the person who's the victim says so. And then while you're in court, you never have to see the offender's face. Hmm. Now, when I found out this guy got out of jail, like they let him out, they arrested him and he got out. I look, I had my lawyer run a background check on him. I posted where his parents lived. I did all of that, like everything. <laughs> wow. Okay, Eventually, like Dave Navarro, had, he knew her too, had gone to the Hollywood homicide and they caught him. He was at LAX at the In-N-Out Burger. They arrested wow. him. Now he's like downtown. I have a lot of friends locked up downtown. So um, as soon as time permits, I want to go down there and visit one of them and just chit chat. Yeah. But yeah. Have lunch. Did they get that law passed? Huh? Did they get the law passed? No. It was no. a Gavin. It was a, we tried to get Gavin Newsom's wife involved because one of the girls knew her and I guess he didn't think it was important enough. Yeah, of course not. Yeah. Was there any, was there any change to the judicial system even moving in that direction? 
Um, no, because right now everyone's so concerned with COVID and then uh, inmates getting released in the street. And that's what's made it super unsafe here. Um, yeah. In fact, a woman had a restraining order against a guy who was in jail who's now roaming the streets free. So this is mm. a totally individual, different, different person. And yeah. um, I just don't, I'm trying to see like where we're going with this. So my cop friend told me as long as he doesn't have his body cam on, and, um, you know, you take matters into your own hands, that's fine. Yeah. Perfect. And, you know, people get really sensitive about guns out here. And I don't think there's a reason to be sensitive about it. You should be afraid of who has it and what their mental capacity is. So exactly, I think yeah. people have the right to bear arms as long as you know. Um, <clears throat> You know, and people have very questionable things. They, they question my sanity when I say that. It shouldn't be a question of my sanity or political views or anything. It should just be it's what's right right now because no one is protecting us in the streets. You can't, you could arrest them, but they're going to get out. Right. Yeah. Yes. You know, the, the jails are all, all overcrowded and everything. And even the streets, it's, you know, just the homeless population. When I was in L.A. for the weekend, um, I mean, I'm going down Hollywood Boulevard and there's like tents up and down the street. I heard about it, but I didn't realize how bad it was. What going that just driving through on the main street, there's all these tents lined up and just sitting there. And it's just. Yeah. But then you, you drive out of the. Huh? Then you drive out of the valley going up into Ventura um up in that area and next thing you know it's just beautiful because it's not la county or city anymore you know and it just you just cross the line from like woodland hills just getting up into you know like agora next thing you know you're like in the next county and it's like a whole nother world you don't see all that stuff that's what's so weird mm -hmm. you know santa barbara is the same way you know just going north mm -hmm. getting out of the valley it's just like pristine and beautiful so if they if, if they got it together up there with all that money these guys down here, man, there's just too much shenanigans and bullshit going on, man. Oh, and, yeah. Know, it just, it, sure. and, it, and it sucks because, you know, me coming from Hollywood and being away for 16 years and going back and seeing it, it was heartbreaking. But at the same time, you know, I know a lot of it is just, you know, um, part of the political climate out there. And uh, yeah. it, and it's so sad to, to really think that because when I was a kid growing up there in the 80s, mm -hmm. I'm a kid like, you know, in my 20s, you see some homeless person sleeping on a bench on Ventura Boulevard here and there. Mm -hmm. And they were older and you just knew that they had some mental mm -hmm. issues. And there's like there's like 20, 30 year olds living, you know, in a like they make them look like freaking condos almost underneath these places. Yeah. They got like yeah, five exactly. rooms yeah. and shit with. You know, the ones like bringing her, you know, combing her wig out in the front and shit and, you know, putting the clothes out there. It's like they got like rooms like this is a whole like bedroom suite over here. And they got shit, even though they're homeless. It's just it's just weird. It's not like what I grew up with, like the down and out. Really, let's try and help this person, man. Just go give them some money, some food. These, I, I believe a lot of these people just I hate to say it. I think a lot of them want to just be there. They don't, they're they not don't care. They, they don't, don't care. care. They don't care. And here's the I'm... thing is in Santa Monica, and I'm sorry, because I just like now I'm just thinking about it. I ran my friend's campaign for city council here. And I just feel as though Republicans need to get involved in a local level to clean up the streets. Now, people get scared when they hear that. They think you're for the death penalty, which isn't true. Yeah. People voted for Gascon. He's the DA now. People didn't do their research. He screwed up San Francisco, which is one of my favorite cities mm. to visit. And he's the reason why a lot of stuff is the way it is and his no cash bail thing. So there was a man that hit and ran a woman and her child about a month ago in Playa Vista. I'd like to know why um, he was allowed out to go back to New York City and come back October 13th for his court date. Yeah. A dual homicide. So wow. he had no priors and he didn't come back. Yeah. So when Elder was running... I was hoping Faulkner would get in because he cleaned up San Diego and not to make it a political thing, but just when we're on this topic of homeless, he cleaned up the homeless and he's a moderate. He's not crazy. I just feel like with the news out there and they didn't allow anyone to have a fair shot of really what people's initiatives are. And it, it, this is partially because of under information. So I was running this campaign thing <laughs> to get rid of Gascon and for the recall 
So I was out in the streets like almost every day, like informing people and showing them this is what this is. This is what that is. You know, we have huger issues than climate change. I feel right now, you know, climate that should be addressed too. So I got into a Zoom thing with women voters rights and they kicked me out of the Zoom conference eight times. Wow. Because I was going after them. What? I said, look, I said, you're telling people how to vote. How is that freedom? You should just give them the information instead yeah. of just telling them this, this, and you're not telling them that. So I went after them. Like, you wouldn't believe. Now I'm blocked from their, um, their Zoom meetings. <laughs> yeah, so cra- I, it's, yeah, it's so crazy <laughs> because, you know, me, you know, I, I, it's like, why do you have to pick a team? Like, why is that so important yeah. to so many people? It's like, why do I have to choose? I don't want to choose a team. I mean, think about it. It's like, I'm not a party loyalist of any sort whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I've been, I've played both sides of the, the fields. So I, you know, I'm almost 60. And that's where the wisdom comes from finally. You know, like, hey, wait a minute. I don't want anything to do with, I'll pick what I like out of this and what I like out of this. And I'll pick what I dislike out of this and dislike out of this. And then I'll form my opinions and I'll go from there. But it's like, when we hear the word diversity, we need so much diversity. Imagine, I've had people say, how could you be like this hybrid and not pick a team? I go, well, wouldn't that be weird if somebody was saying, hey, I wanted to date this person of, of color here, but I'm white. And I go, and somebody said, well, that wouldn't be cool. Why would you do that? It'd be like, why wow, you sound like a racist. Well, why do you have to pick a team politically? <laughs> it's the same principle. It's like, well, now you're forcing me to be into this. Like, uh, you wouldn't do it with somebody racially. Why would you try and do it politically? You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. So, you know, hey, once again, I said this before, no Tom Brady fan ever said that's fucked. He deflated that football, not one. And I don't have a dog, <laughs> I don't, I don't have a dog in the game with, with Tom Brady. I love Tom Brady. But you ne- remember when that went, whole scandal went down and the football was mm-hmm. deflated? You didn't yep. hear that's – a, that's a party loyalist, a team player for you. You know what, everybody? You're right. We want clean air. We want the same shit. I grew up in Hollywood as a fucking hairdresser. Yeah, the most diverse, well, that's what I love about Boise, the, the though. Diverse, the most diverse people I grew up around working with. And people are like, what happened to you? I go, what happened to your party, dude, is really what but this is the question. But anyway, yeah. enough of that bullshit. Yeah, that's what yeah, I love about knows, Boise. I hope it individual gets candidates, huh? Individual candidates pay more. Yeah. It's more important to pay attention to the individual candidates that you're in, in an election than the specific parties. That's Parties okay. are yeah, I want to pay attention to candidates. See, people, yep. you guys sound so smart. I want to be in like Idaho or Florida right now, temporarily. But yeah. <laughs> well, you know, um, Boise is like the best kept secret, and so like everybody coming from California that comes to Boise doesn't realize how nice and clean our city is. And so a lot of Californians are actually selling their houses and moving to Boise. Don't tell them that. Don't tell them that. I'm not tell telling them, them that. Up. Well, they're on the show now. Oh, well. All right. Our three <laughs> listeners are going to go ahead and move and move to Boise now. And we're sorry. Five <laughs> listeners. Just don't move to Coeur d'Alene. <laughs> yeah. You guys yeah. go up to Coeur d'Alene. Just stay out of Boise. Hey, there's always I know about that. Bro. But, um, What's happening, Bo? Yeah. Hey, What's Bo. Up, producer Bo in the house. Hi. Hey, guys. Hey. You said there's always Southern Illinois. Uh, Southern Illinois. Yeah, okay. Southern Illinois. Yeah, no, nobody ever said, oh, I'm going there. <laughs> exactly. Man, I'm it's moving to exactly Mound City. Thing, I'm moving to Metropolis, no, baby. <laughs> the homeless so, Superman. <laughs> I'm going to move to Holland. Um, I've got to get going soon, but this is like too much fun. I feel like yes. we should do it again. Absolutely. Like, Let's yeah, get Mike Lindell. Get Let's what? Let's do it. Mike Lindell. Yeah. Okay. He doesn't just do pillows. He's got the freaking, you know, comforters, the freaking <laughs> my, my slippers, the fucking my snuggy, the my, he's got it all. He's got, he's got the whole thing. Whole uh, caboodle in a bag. He's got Maybe it. he'll cuddle with me if I buy one of his pillows. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I mean, he'll what? He'll cuddle with me. Um, cuddle? Not a one <laughs> He'll have a new line yeah. called My Cuddle. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. Uh, not with him, at least. Um, so, yeah, tune into Crazy Train Podcast. It's crazy with a K. I promise next week's story will not let down, but there are, be, it's every Wednesday starting next week. Awesome. Thank you very much, Jasmine St. Clair. Thank you for taking some time and joining us on a Wednesday night, Jasmine. 
Thank you. Thank you. Right on, Thank Jasmine. You. you guys have fun. Stay in I touch know. and stay out of trouble. Uh, so always. Anyway. No, trouble's my middle name. I'm Roger the Wild Child. Don't you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah so look wild. at him. What time do you a... that again? Okay. <laughs> 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 I'll see Alrighty. you later. Thank you, Jasmine. Bye. Right, bye. That was awesome. Oh, my gosh. She was so much fun. Oh, I love her. <laughs> I felt like we were on a Howard Stern show is what I felt like. Well, we took it pretty easy on her. I mean, you know, Howard <laughs> would have been hitting up some pretty hardcore questions. But, you know, what was great is not having all those and, um, you know, just where we landed, we landed. And it was wonderful. It was really fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Imagine. Did you have fun co-hosting with us today? Yeah, I did. Yeah, and you were asking some great questions, man. Yes, and adding was. a lot of great stuff. What are you smoking there? Weed. <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what strain? Uh, it's a custom blend I made that's soaked in cherry oil. Wow. Oh, nice. She's hardcore, man. <laughs> yeah, she yeah, is. Man. It's what like is three it? different indicas and then just marinated in cherry oil. Yeah. <laughs> so the cherry oil is just like for flavor. That too. That too. Um, I assume you are not overly familiar with that substance. No, if I smoke, I trip like I'm on LSD. I swear to God, I do not get all mellow. And, <laughs> I swear to God. I, 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 it happened when I was a teenager, man. And I, I just like, oh my God. And then, you know, I, I even smoked some CBD one time that had no THC in it. And I tripped for 10 hours. Like 10 I hours? For, I swear to God, like I was on shrooms. I was flipping out paranoid. <laughs> I was on, on, on CBD. I was trying to <laughs> calm down. Okay, so you're the guy that, that all of those safety pamphlets in school were warning us about. Yes, so not, so that's that, he's that guy. Awesome. I'm you're the guy. Telling, I'm just telling like, you. Singular human who's wired that way that that we're yeah. always told that's what it's like for everyone. Well, I know it's not because I know a lot of people that smoke, but I mean, just saying for yeah. me, it was like, what a bummer, man. You know, you're like trying to like calm down. Something gnarly was going on in my life, and I was like, yeah. And so, I'm like, a, a a doctor actually said, hey, you know, try if the 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 oil's not doing it, smoke some. It goes straight into your lungs and. <laughs> Boys sure did it going straight into my lungs. <laughs> 15 minutes later, I was freaking going bananas. And I don't mean good like, oh, I'm finally mellow, man. I'm talking like, oh, my God, get me out of the house. There's people looking at me. I mean, I was like freaking nuts off Jesus. CBD. Yeah, so there's something in <laughs> cannabis itself. Not, it's not the THC, obviously, and it's not the CBD because there's something in it that makes me do that. Because if, you, if you're trying some... Uh, CBD that has no THC in it, what else could you contribute to having that kind of a hallucination and trip, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, THC is comprised of a lot of different chemicals. Um, it, it's a really complex kind of, uh, molecularly speaking, it's a really complicated structure. And there's a lot of stuff in it that affects us in different ways. It's only now sort of being looked at more critically from a scientific perspective. Some people are extremely recept receptive to certain chemicals in it. Different strains have different levels of all of that. So the strain that made you get really nutty like that, it might be a whole class of strains. But there's like, a, there's a good chance that like if you smoked a different one, if you found the right one, it would probably do next to nothing. Just I'm, af that I'm afraid is. I'll never try it again. I'm too scared. <laughs> you could read it. You shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> my, 18, you, my, like, yeah. my daughter was going, Dad, it's all in your head. And I go... You're damn right. It's in my head. Get me out of here, man. Let's go for a yeah. car ride. And then I'm in the car. I'm like, get me out of the car. I was like, no. you're going to be drag racing here shortly. No shit, man, with my clothes off. Oh, my God. The minute you let that crazy outside of your head, now you've got cops in your yard. And now you're right. in trouble. I'm telling you, man, I was trying to pick up fucking sticks and shit out there for two minutes, pretending like I was doing something. And then I'm like, oh, my God, my neighbors are looking at me. It All right, awful. guys, real quick. Uh, he was at a hockey game earlier, so we bumped him to the end of the show. So let's bring on our buddy, Frankie. Frankie, the weatherman. Frankie, the weatherman. Who? Frankie. Who? Frankie. Ladies and gentlemen.
Oh, Frankie, how's it going, buddy? I'm doing, I'm doing great so far. And the weather is in Sydney, Nova Scotia, is on and off rain right now in my area right now. And it's been a lot of rain in Vancouver, British Columbia, and Victoria, British Columbia. It's going to be bring more rain in Victoria, British Columbia, St. Louis, Missouri, and all those places are warm right now. And up in northern Ontario, it's warm even a little bit. Google's a little bit getting warmer. Over in Europe, it's been lots of rain in UK, Australia, and all these places in New Zealand. They had a large hail in southeastern Australia, including places like South Africa. It's warming up in South Africa. Same in Argentina. Brazil is getting warmer there because their summer starts on December 21st. And for Cargo, New Zealand, their longest day of the year is on December 21st, 2021. One, that means that it's July and August. That's a really boring time for extreme meteorologist Reed Timmer. He's really busy during spring and winter, during in tornado season. Reed Timmer, he's extreme meteorologist from AccuWeather. He's really busy himself. He's you know, busy. Hey Frankie, where's the where's the warmest part of the world right now? The warmest part of right warm somewhere in Africa or somewhere in Africa and those places in it. In close, to the, close to the equator, I would imagine, right? Close to the equator. Is it summer in Chile? It's all dry there. It's it's very dry. Australia has summer right now. Would it would it be warmer in Australia or Africa? Uh, it's it's warmer in northern Australia. It's it's colder in southern Australia during southern hemisphere winter. In for Cargill, New Zealand gets really cold weather in July. When I get hot weather, they get cold weather. Yeah, they do. Yeah. That means, <laughs> Jen, you're on Jolie show every Thursday night. Jolie only show. Jolie only. He's a comedian, meteorological guy. Yes, sir. Frankie and I do the meteorological report with Joey only once a week. Oh, you guys go <laughs> way back then. Yes, huh? they do. That's how I met uh, Imogen. Okay. And awesome. that's I, cool. that before that I went on with the three of them. Before I went on the show, I was on another radio show called. Ham radio <laughs> all the way in New York City before he, I showed up on your show. Well, we're yeah. blessed. Good Thank Lord. you. How was the yeah. hockey game tonight? You uh, couldn't do the weather in the beginning, so well, you had hockey I was at the on. hockey game first, second, third periods. It was great. What Did team they have were you playing? Cape Breton Eagles facing against Charlottetown Islanders. Hey, Frankie, do they ever get you to sing, Oh, Canada? Do they ever get you to sing that? And that means I went to Cape Breton. One, two, one Canadian team plays against another Canadian team. They had the same Canadian national anthem. What happens if American team plays against Canadian team like the Ontario Hockey League and the Western Hockey League? They say an the American national anthem, then a the Canadian national anthem. If American teams in Canada, if the Canadian teams in the States, they say the Canadian national anthem, then the American national anthem, anthem if the Canadian team is in the States. That's awesome. Have you ever sung the national anthem for the Canadian one? Ever done it? I've seen people sing it on our national anthem. Have you ever tried to sing it yourself? Oh, Canada, how Roman native land. And then end it with the tornado siren for us. Go for it. Let's do a tornado siren. All right, Frankie McDonald. Right on, and they're best of luck. I'm going to down here. You're listening to Roger Wildchild's show. Imogen, I'll see you on Joey Only Show on Thursday night. And Roger and the guys, I'll see you guys on Sunday. Sounds we'll good, see you. Thanks, Frankie. See you, Frankie. Frankie. The Weatherman. Frankie. The Weatherman. Who? Frankie. Who? Frankie. Oh, you got to love him. Where is that cat? <laughs> Where is that cat? Uh, Where's that pussy? <laughs> right here. <laughs> oh, look at that. So it's a hairless thing. Yeah. Little pink Ooh, monster. I love it. <laughs> look at that cute skin and everything. <laughs> oh, what's he's his, a What's his name? Morbo. Morbo, Morbo. Fishball. 
<laughs> there we go. Kid, yeah, that's you're great. kidding. Look, at least you don't have. At least it doesn't have to worry about getting uh, hairballs and trying to lick them off and all that weird shit. Oh, for sure. Get a shower just like <laughs> last night, so he's super clean right now. <laughs> Uh, Looks hair. like it. <laughs> Perfect. Imogen, I do want to thank you so much for uh, taking your time and filling in for Deborah tonight. Yeah, we definitely, have, we definitely have to have you back on again as a co as a uh, guest co host again. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. having me. This has been fun. Yeah. <laughs> and Loved definitely it. for a guest to talk to. Very yeah. happy we've been able to chat with Jasmine. Yes. <laughs> Definitely want to thank Jasmine St. Clair for joining us today as well. Next, uh, this Sunday, we have Donnie Most. You know him as Ralph Mouth from Happy Days. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Oh, it's going to be an awesome Sunday night episode. You do not want to miss this one. And you'll be able to call in and talk to Ralph Mouth. So that, that blah, 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 I can't even talk today. That would be really, really cool. <laughs> All right, Frankie McDonald, thank you for the weather. Imogen from Canada, thank you. Darren Chef, Deborah will be back on Sunday. And Ken, producer Bo, thank you for all the hard work behind the scenes. Until Sunday, guys, I'm Roger the Wild Child. Peace out. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>